I'm going to let you in on an industry secret. And if you have a dog who sheds, you need to put down the de-shedding tools. These tools that you see marketed are actually part of a larger equation. And most of the time, they only set you up for short-term success. And unfortunately, in some cases, they're causing your dog to shed more. <laughs> you know that age old saying about teaching a man to fish, right? Well, I'm here and I'm about to help you guys learn what I have learned over the course of 15 years of working experience to help you for a lifetime. Welcome back and for those who might be new here, my name is Alana and I have been grooming dogs for well over a decade and de-shedding is actually one of my favorite services to perform. In fact, I myself have two dogs and they are both shedders. So this does give me a whole lot of personal insight. I'm here today to help you easily de-shed a dog at home just like I would in my salon. The technique that I am going to show you is simple, it's easy, and it requires minimal tools. But it yields the best results. And the best part of this method is it actually promotes healthy skins and coats, which unlike some of the tools that are on the market, they can actually damage your dog's coat over time and with overuse. Now, I do know that on my channel, I have a video on what tools to use during a de-shed process. And these tools are still extremely handy and I stick by them. But here's what I began to think about. And the issue begins with that these tools that are used at home are usually used by themselves. So you sit down with your dog, you take your tool out and you brush them with the tool. That's it. And they are likely being used on a dry coat. And depending on the owner and what the preference is, a lot of the time this can happen multiple times a month, depending on how often your brushing schedule does occur. But in my salon, those tools tend to be more of a finishing touch on an already mostly de-shedded dog. Do you see what I'm saying here? So I'm gonna go through step by step and I'm gonna show you the entire process, show you the tools and the methods that professionals actually use to get long lasting de-shedding results. And on top of that, it's gonna give your dog healthy skin and healthy coats. So here is the number one thing that I need you to know and to take away from this video. And that is that de-shedding actually happens in the tub. Yes. That's a fact, any good de-shedding service is happening mostly in there. So with some elbow grease and patience, I'm going to help you encourage that coat to release and you are going to be miles ahead of the game that way. So let's get into the two components of the bathing process, the shampoo and the conditioner. Now you can go about this in the traditional way and that is the shampoo first and the conditioner after, no different than you or I. Or if your dog's a little overdue and they have a lot of hair to shed out, you may wanna go with the conditioner, shampoo, conditioner method, which is also called close open close. So let me get into the facts. COC or close open close, it's got a funny name. So why is it called that? And let me just say that hair cuticles don't actually open or close really. Um, well, they do lift or at very least become slightly raised. And this process happens when we shampoo because the water actually breaks hydrogen bonds. And when that happens, the hair shaft swells, which in turn causes the cuticle to raise. And this can be exacerbated by the shampoo which is why it's super important to consider a well-formulated shampoo with the correct pH balance when picking one out for your dog. Because the higher the pH, the more lifting of the cuticle. Now, once lifted, it actually does allow products to penetrate, but it doesn't necessarily allow the most beneficial products to just like, come on in like it's a house party. Oh, as if. It actually has more to do with the chemistry of the actual products themselves and what their molecular size is. So those will be determined and then allowed to penetrate through the hair shaft into the cuticle. 
The reason why this method tends to work really well with dogs who are overproducing coat that needs to shed out is actually two prong. Most likely in these circumstances, there's gonna be a really big buildup of dead skin cells and dander that need to come out. And these things tend to be quite oil-based. And to actually clean an oil base, you actually do need another oil. So now if you're into skincare, kind of like I am, when I have sunscreen or makeup on at night, I actually use an oil-based cleanser first to go in to kind of get everything broken up. And then I go in with a mild cleanser afterwards to wash it all away. So same concept, the conditioner is your oil-based cleanser, and then you're going in with a surfactant, which is your shampoo, and that's gonna wash away everything that was broken up with the conditioner. And then you're gonna go back in with a conditioner to add moisture because it's all been stripped out by the shampoo. Hope that makes a little sense. The second prong of this is actually the slip that the conditioner creates, and that helps release shedding hair that is stuck to the skin or stuck to other hairs, and it just needs that extra oomph to come out. So all that being said, first step, get your dog into the tub. And then you need to assess, do you need the COC method or is just a shampoo conditioner scenario good for you? So let's start with the COC method. So get your dog into the tub, saturated and conditioned. And once they are nice and thoroughly saturated and fully covered in the conditioner head to toe, you use a comb if you have a shorter hair dog, or you can use a slicker brush if you have a longer hair dog. And this is gonna help distribute the conditioner as well as start the de-shedding process. Now dogs with a lot of impacted coat, you may not be able to get a comb through. So just use the slicker brush for now until you loosen things up more. Really work on getting it down to the skin. Once you are satisfied, rinse them off and rinse them well. Then you apply shampoo. Now, if you're just doing the shampoo and the conditioner method, this is kind of where you're starting from. So now once again, your dog is thoroughly rinsed and this is whether you're rinsing off the conditioner from the first method or if you're just getting them wet to start the process if you're starting with shampoo. Then get your dog shampooed really well. And I'm talking all over, don't miss, you know, get their paws, get their face, get their ears, their tail, their butt, everything. You gotta scrub them down and right to the skin. I like to actually use my fingers to massage it in quite well. And I have to say the dogs love a massage, so good tip. And then you need to rinse really well. And I'm talking, you can't have any suds left. Like if you think you're done rinsing, rinse again. You need to really set up a good, clean slate for this process, it's very important. After this, you're going to condition. So either you're on your first conditioner if you're doing just the shampoo and conditioner method, or this is going to be your second conditioner in the COC method. This round of conditioner is the one that you absolutely cannot skip. It's very important. It is absolutely crucial to the entire process. So you need to be applying conditioner after shampooing every time. I need to stress this, if you apply shampoo, please apply conditioner. Whether you're de-shedding or not, it is important. Please do that because it creates a base for a healthy skin and coat. And that falls under the branch of de-shedding. So never, never skip conditioner. Now, once you have applied the conditioner all over, same as like the first conditioner or the shampoo, all over, do not miss any spots, really work it in because now you're gonna start to really work out that coat. As you are massaging, you will notice a lot of hair being released during this process. Now, if you are doing this in a tub at home, you really wanna have something to collect all that hair. Don't just let it go down the drain because there's gonna likely be a whole lot of it. At this point, the hair should really be gliding out with ease as you really work it in with your fingers. By now, the process of that dead hair from the telogen phase should be coming out. Once the condition is applied everywhere and things are getting nice and loosened up, this is where you're gonna grab your slicker brush or your comb, as I said, depending on whether you have a long hair dog or a short hair dog, you can select the tool that you need. You are going to brush it through. And the slip that is created by the conditioner is going to help the undercoat that's been loosened easily slide right out with the brush or the comb. 
it's important to say that this does not harm the top coat or hairs that are currently in the antigen or cantigen phase of growing. Just the dead hair from the telogen phase is what we are removing. So keep this all in mind when you think about deshedding at home and how it usually takes place on the dry coat with no slip. I don't think it's rocket science to see a difference in how effective this method is going to be comparatively. So once you're done combing out all what you can and that is willing to come out, now it is the time to rinse and rinse thoroughly. Same as with the shampoo. If you think that you are done rinsing, rinse again. It's really important. Clean slate. We need a clean slate. Make sure all of the product comes off. And once you're good, grab a towel and you can start to towel dry them. Now the goal here, get out as much moisture as you can from the coat. Very important because getting out as much moisture as you can is going to help along the drying process. And yes, we are going to dry them because this is just a non-negotiable. You cannot properly de-shed a dog without a good blow dryer. And this is going to help with all that dead undercoat that we have just loosened up and it's really gonna get pushed out and released. So get to drying and then once your dog is 100% dry, 100, that's the goal. Please do your best to make sure your dog is not damp at all. If they feel cold to the touch, they're likely still damp. And then this is the point that you can go back in with your brush and with your comb or any of the other de-shedding tools that I had mentioned in this video right here. I will link it above and below for you. And you can go in with those just as a finishing touch. As I said at the top of the video, these come at the end and this is gonna help get out any of the hair, as I said, that was loosened up during this process. So it's all gonna come out easily and your dog is going to be de-shedded like a professional that way. This prevents overuse and they aren't doing the bulk of the work for you. In fact, they're doing very minimal work. Most of the work is done, as I said, in the tub. Now, if you have one of these two problems, you don't have an appropriate hose to spray down your dog during the bathing process, or a good blow dryer at home, there are options. So there are a lot of these DIY dog wash stations at pet stores that are readily available and extremely affordable. And even some grooming shops, you may actually be able to rent out their space. Like as a DIY job, I did work in a salon where you could come in and use our tools and equipment and it was a flat rate and you could bathe your own dog. You just have to hang out with us for a while. So call around. I know that uh, Pet Values, Pet Co's, I believe have them. I think some Ruffins Pet Centers have some, even some Bone and Biscuits, I know, and Wren's, I believe, offers some DIY washing stations. So as I said, call around, call your local groomers, call the pet shops, find out if there's a station near you because they are gonna have even the shampoos and the conditioners that are appropriate as we talked about pH levels, they usually have options for you there to use as well. So I know there's a lot of you out there still who likely for many reasons, you wanna do this in the comfort of your own home. And I can actually help you ease the burden on your wallet with this video right here, where I'm gonna go into the most affordable high velocity dryers so you can get that job done like a pro without the price tag. Oh, <laughs> my